Alrighty guys, so just a, a quick update, not much exciting stuff has happened, I've basically piped in, put your horns back in place, you might note that there's no air conditioning um, condenser there because the condenser, I damaged it, and so there's no point in putting it into place, I will just get a new one at the point that we decide to go off to France or one of the hot summers or something like that, I still want to leave the space there for um, for that air con. I mean, I could probably fit, just about fit an intercooler between them, as it is. Um, but I, st I still think I'm gonna stick with my idea with the, the two set it's a very scary idea, because um, you know you're cutting into the car. Anyway. Um, so nothing really exciting has happened. Uh, I've plumbed it all in, as you can see here. Hoses are in, fuel lines are in. Um, still, still going to work out the um, electric side of it. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the diesel binnacle in back here, and I might end up having to just wire the um, the pulse of the crank position sensor straight to the back here. You know, and um, I can run a run a socket out or whatever. Um, standard enough socket so that that actually might be all right I'm just going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort out everything else and get it uh, to the point where I can kind of turn the car on see what I'm dealing with I'm gonna to have to rewire the the um, alternator plug because I should have kept the alternator from the 300 um, petrol engine uh, but the this the diesel one is different so I'm gonna to have to maybe extend that and put some lugs on it so that I can screw it onto the back. I need to have a more detailed look to know for certain. I have this pipe, I believe, if you're watching from the beginning, you'll know all about it. This pipe is your feed from here around to your vacuum, or to the front of your, um, your vacuum pump, basically. And the reason, the reason why you want to say this one here is because this one is off a of diesel and it has that little offshoot there, and that means we can get a feed of, um, of pressure going to the ignition. We have the special ignition that comes with a diesel, and then we have another one that comes back out here, and we'll hook up into this one here, and then that'll be our cutoff. So it'll, it'll all work like factory, just the idea that's what we want. Um, there's a little bit of a, a pipe issue here where it's kind of close to the cold side of that. I might put a bit of um, reflective tape or something around that just to add it. It won't be in, it's not gonna be a big issue um, either way. What else? Yes, exhausts. Um, so this is the same diameter as the exhaust system I have. I'm, I'm basically, I'm in two minds about this because um, I have no direct initial intention on upgrading that turbo. And if I did upgrade it, I'd be looking at something like the hybrid one that uses the same internals. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know quite yet if it's if it warrants having a bigger exhaust system than. Let me just show you the one I have. The one back here, you know. So that's I think that's two and a half inches. It's basically the same size as this. Um, and if I lot of route there what I'm going to plan on doing there now and I know this is dark I plan on bringing it straight down back here where that dipstick is I've, uh, I'm going to offset that dipstick that dipstick there and bring it up straight across here and duck back down to the turbo that's my idea on it now that you can see the size difference that's actually slightly over three inches. So let me just see what this is. So what are we reading? We're reading 85 outer diameter, which is, what is it? Three, three and a quarter inches. So, I mean, if you can fit that through, then you've got plenty of space for your exhaust. And if I try, I think I can. Yeah, I can. I can just bring it through now. It's fouling on stuff. 
we'd have to remove the heat shield or at least we'd have to cut out part of this heat shield. The same, we'd have to dint that in a little bit, um, which would probably be fine, you know. Um, it would have been ideal to do that when the engine was out. Um, but anyway, and then the only other thing I could see being an issue there is I left a bit of the knob of the um, EGR valve, so I'd probably have to take it take the exhaust manifold off and then lob that off. Um, so yeah, I'm in two minds as to what to do with the two, uh, with, the, with the exhaust. Uh, as I said, this is a daily car. Um, I'm not going for, like I'd much prefer to have low end grunt with something like this versus uh, a big turbo that I, I get really high end and have to rev it all the way out. So that's one thing. Um, the other other thing I had an issue with was this pipe that goes from down here and goes around to there, uh, which feeds the back suspension with its um, the back SLS suspension. The one that K was for the M103 engine was far too short. Well, not far too short. With 15 centimeters, would leave me plenty extra so take that what you want and um, that that's essentially the the length of that and um, so i could have made the other one work i'm going to try and get a, a hose made up that's 15 centimeters longer they're very peculiar hoses not something standard it's 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 causing a little bit of an issue as it already and um, so that that's one thing i can't find in any of my pictures i cannot find how the na 606 that I removed from one of these engines, how it piped around there. So if anybody has any kind of photographs of, of their engine bay and how it piped around and in, in an NA W124 application, please let me know. That'd be fantastic for, uh, for kind of uh, figuring it all out. So that's that. Um, what else has, have I done? I've put the rear axles in the drums i hate doing the drum brakes on these cars actually on cars in general i just hate drum brakes and um, but I've, I've i've put in the drum brake for the parking and um, on both sides there i just need to finish up that radiator is in and i have a mess of hoses here one of the things uh let me just see one of the things that might be of interest to you guys is that is my setup for the oil cooler so far too long at the moment i have i have my standard plugins to the oil cooler so that, or the oil filter housing which go back here you can see the two of them there and then essentially i have put a um a crimped on connection for a uh, for, for here for a metric crimped on connection and then that would send me on down here and then what I'm going to do is I will put my oil cooler in place mark it up and then I'll bring it back and get them to crimp on some um, some connections for the oil cooler now my issue with the oil cooler side of it is everything I find is AN style fittings and the guys who do these crimping are doing it in like kind of um, BSP and, and Imperial, I can get some metric just like this, but um, not the AN style fitting. So that leads me down an issue um, where I'm trying to find a an a oil cooler that is BSP. So we'll see how how I get away with how I get on with that. Um, but I mean that is a very foolproof. That will never fail. This system won't fail. Um, whereas if I was putting on an AN fitting, I can imagine it would fail <laughs> um so yeah that's it i have a mess of of hoses and and pipes and everything here more hoses more pipes so i'm going to just zoom out here and let you guys or walk away rather and let you guys see what i've been up to for the weekend so for the weekend basically what i've done is i've cleared out everything from the back of this shed that i had put off to the side of the walls and everything like that and brought it to the middle here so I can start to see what I have and what I don't have and everything like that. So, um, like, I have my ignition or glow plug um, 
wiring and everything like that. I have more glow plug wiring here. That's the NA606. That is the Turbo OM606 from the WP10. Um, and then I have my ignition switch from a diesel that has our, our locking out system. Uh, you can just see it. You can see it there. And then we have our two hoses going in. And what else have I got there? I have spare prop shafts, everything like that. I have my fans. My fans actually caused me a bit of an issue because remember I tapped out the um, viscous clutch to M7. And now M7 is really very, very difficult to get um, to get a, 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 a screw for or a bolt for. So I'm, I'm going to think about maybe getting an M8 bolt, smoothing it out a little bit and tapping it to M7. Uh, I have what would have been lovely if I had known at the time I have the housing for um, your washer fluid uh, on an, a 606 and what would be lovely about this would be let me bear me two seconds just grab this over sorry I'm getting a dose of the hiccups that sits just there and I've seen them and the, the manifold sits perfectly down there and then that leaves you and you can actually then remove that one and you can put in a standard um, intake box, which would be nice, you know. Um, it, I, it's something that I might do in the future, but I didn't take the tab, the, the bottom support bracket out of my donor car. So um, it'll be something that would wait. But for now, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put a cone on there. I actually think I might like that because it might give me the intake noise that I so desperately want. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, yeah, so that's 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 it, guys. I've been basically cleaning out the shed, getting it all together. You can see there's a whole mess of stuff there. Like um, I have transmission oils and all the different oils and everything like that. So yeah. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And um, yeah, I've got nothing else to say about any advice you can give me. I'd much appreciate it. Cheers. Bye.